Something different here now. We've got all kinds of bases. I've got all kinds of stuff sitting here. This is one of my personal favorites. This is an early 1974 white Rickenbacker with the uh, traditional black trim, which in the old days meant black plastic. Didn't have black metal pieces, just had black plastic. All right. Let's talk about what this thing can do. First off, this base has been modified a couple of times, and it is now uh, back to normal. Originally, someone had taken this off and routed and put a badass one on it, put a surround. So if you see there's some uh, discoloration on the body, it's because they had to match the uh, finish where they covered the holes. Same with the headstock. You can see the headstock's got a little discoloring going on there because somebody put a string retainer across here for some unknown reason. Anyway, all that said, that's all gone now and it's back to normal. So let's see what this one can do. All right, so of course, we've got two pickups, two volumes, one for each. Standard rig setup. This thing's dialed in normally. So. For those of you who like this sound, I'm going to turn the treble down and turn the tone knob for down just a little bit. Okay, so we know who that is. Or how about... Okay, front pickup gets that thing happening. Rear pickup. So you'll notice on this guitar, the pickup is closer to the neck than on some of the other rigs. Usually the pickup is back here. This is half inch spacing. There's a half an inch between the pickup and the end of the neck. On the later ones, it's set back. Uh, by the way, that change took place in 1975. Halfway between, uh, halfway through the year, 1975, somewhere in May, June, because I've had them, uh, they slid the pickup back to give it a different tonal response because you can get real boom from this front pickup. It's kind of like on my pink P bass. I have a big mud bucker right there. You get that kind of thumpy, boomy thing going. Okay, this one, again, same thing. If I just do the front pickup. Of course, I'm playing fast. I've got light, light, light gauge strings on this thing uh, because that's just what I like. So anyway, uh, again, going on here, there's also some people's favorite bass player used to use one of these all the time. And that's the reason why I got one because I wanted to play... To do that kind of stuff, or all that kind of thing. You know what? You've got to have at least one of these in your arsenal because it does fit. It's not a one trick pony, okay? Because if I'm doing this kind of stuff, So, enough of this two hand imitations. Uh, <laughs> enough of that. Anyway, so these are not just one trick ponies. You can get away with doing all kinds of cool stuff on a Rickenbacker. Um, the neck on this thing, it's hard to tell in here, but I will show you this. The neck on this thing is not real thick. This way, it's pretty thin. Ricks were known for thin, thin front to back necks. And this thing weighs about nine pounds. Standard stuff. Most of them I played have been niners. I have another one sitting in the rack that I'm not going to pull out today for a video, but it'll happen as soon as I tweak it. It's actually two years newer. It's a 76. It's been refinished in blue, and the neck is twice as thick as this one. It makes for different things. This one I'm going to use on a record that's coming up. Uh, you can look on Facebook. I have a page up for it. The band is called Innocent Monday. And this bass, along with my Bluesman basses and my Pink JD, will be featured. Uh, Ten songs. It's going to be awesome. You can't, you can't wait to hear it. It's going to be all kinds of styles across the board. So it's going to be a lot of this with some crazy time signatures. Be prepared. It's going to be fun. Anyway, if you get a chance, check out an old Rick. If you can find one for a decent price, pick it up. By all means, you will not be upset. I hope you have a good one. This is today's date. This is today's base. Until tomorrow.